So today uh, we have the honor to welcome uh, Excellency Luis de Almeida Sampaio at the ICD today. Thank you, Excellency, for the honor of joining us at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin. And thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, early on, earlier on upstairs. Um, we would like to ask you five questions in order to hear your thoughts and opinions on some salient issues. And I'm going to start uh, with the first question, which is, following your lecture, we would like to ask you, um, what does cultural diplomacy mean to you? It is a vital part of international relations and of diplomacy, more so in times of crisis, and we know that we are living uh, in a time of turbulence and crisis, so it is extremely important that we never lose sight to the impact that cultural diplomacy can make, representing tolerance, understanding differences, understanding the other. And so this is a very important uh, uh, reminder to the role that culture can play. Traditionally, when you would talk about cultural diplomacy, you would immediately imagine uh, selling the image, the culture, and the culture quality uh, and traditions of a nation, a country. Uh, cultural diplomacy is much more than that. Of course, it is important then you promote that you promote what you have, but it is even more important that you understand the other, understand the other's point of view and the other's perspective on uh, global issues and uh, global uh, and sorry and cultural diplomacy obviously is an extremely important dimension of that uh, preoccupation that diplomats and politicians must have especially now uh, in building bridges open doors and especially understanding each other um, and I want to know something about um, the relationship between Germany and Portugal. What is special about it? And also, can cultural diplomacy contribute and improve the German-Portuguese cooperation? Of course it can. If I may start by that, by the yes. latter part of your question, it is extremely important because, again, we are talking about uh, two uh, countries of the European Union, countries of Europe, but uh, that are very different, culturally speaking. Uh, Germany is in the center of Europe with a very well-established central European cultural tradition. Portugal, as we all know, has a history, a long uh, centuries history of relations with Latin America, Brazil, with the Atlantic, uh, with Africa. So it is very much a door to a multicultural world and Portugal can really play that role. If you think about the fact that we share a language with 250 million people on Earth, Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, and all the other countries in Africa that speak Portuguese, and that the Portuguese language is really a potential language of the globalization that immediately brings to the forefront the importance of uh, Portugal as a cultural player because of that bridge that Portugal can be. Can be. Um, and of course, Germany is the most important uh, economy uh, in the European Union. It is gaining, by the day, more political and financial responsibility. And for Portugal, as for all other countries in the European Union, the relations with Germany become even more important today than in the past. Yeah, my next question relates to what you just talked about. How can um, Germany and Portugal learn from each other in order to reduce economic and social problems? And what do you think, um, how can both countries benefit from each other? Yeah, they can benefit a lot because in a global economy, obviously foreign direct investment and uh, exports and trade uh, and freedom, freedom of movement are uh, of the essence. If you take the example of Portugal, we have uh, a lot of uh, sectors, of clusters of excellence that are extremely important for Germany. Let's talk about renewable energies, but also about uh, nanotechnology. Portugal is producing a lot of components for the German automotive industry. And of course, all the big German companies are present in Portugal. Siemens, Bayer, Bosch, Volkswagen, they are there and very well established for a long uh, period uh, now. Um, Portugal uh, is really very attractive 
for Germany and for German companies, also because of the reasons I mentioned uh, answering the previous question. If you think about Portugal, not as a small peripheral economy, but as a country that can provide a bridge towards very important emerging markets that the German companies don't know as well as the Portuguese companies know. There are markets in Africa, in Latin America, that we can claim that nobody knows as well as we do for very obvious reasons. And so joint ventures with German companies, with European companies of other European Union member nations could be extremely interesting in that, in that perspective. So it is very important that on an economic and also on a cultural scale, you think about Portugal as a platform, as a hub for an immense world that uh, shares with Portugal the same language and many of our cultural traditions. Um, now in regards to the youth in Europe, um, the future prospects from young people in the European Union are currently considered to be rather difficult. How is the current situation in Portugal and how can intercultural exchange strengthen the youth? I would say that um, only the intercultural exchange can provide a real strategic answer. You know that uh, uh, we have uh, a very important uh, uh, unemployment uh, uh, right. Um, it is not in Portugal as high as it is, for instance, in Spain or in Greece, but it is very important. We were never used to these high levels of unemployment especially when it comes to youth unemployment. And the sad irony is that this is the best trained Portuguese youth generation ever, and it is this generation that is feeling the burden and the pain of very high rates of unemployment. So what can be done and how Germany, again, can play a very important role? One of the answers, probably it is not providing all the answers, but one of the answers is, of course, to promote and to introduce more the dual system of education that Germany uh, knows so well and uses so well in countries like Portugal. You know that there is a common voice that says that the professional training system of education, the dual system of education, only works in German cultural like-minded countries like Switzerland or Austria, but we are determined to prove that in Portugal, with the successes that we are making in fighting and overcoming the financial crisis, systems like that can also work for the benefit of a strategic long-term fight against unemployment. And why that is very much related with culture? Because it is really the adaptation of a different cultural pattern. You really need not only to be aware of the differences, but also to be open-minded enough to adapt our educational system to the needs of fighting youth unemployment. Thank you. And our last question is regarding your professional career. You have uh, worked for both the NATO and the EU, so very to very different institutions. And we want to know, has this experience shaped and maybe even changed your world view? Um, let me tell you probably one of the most striking things. Um, when you listen or read uh, things about the Eurocrats, the bureaucracy of Brussels, uh, people without heart and without uh, feelings and really without uh, uh, sincere compassion for uh, the others. This is a total nonsense. Never then inside the European institutions I found really committed people towards the European ideals and really committed and preoccupied with public perceptions, public well-being, the future of the European youth. So um, that myth about the bureaucrats uh, is something that I know now, having worked in Brussels, 
it is really a myth. It is not reality. Now, when it comes to NATO, I must tell you that I was uh, working inside NATO at a very special point in time. It coincided with the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, and it coincided with the opening up of uh, Central and Eastern Europe, and of course Germany, uh, Eastern Germany, GDR, uh, opening up and uh, uh, creating the conditions for uh, freedom again to flourish. And that was really an extremely rewarding time, uh, uh, coming out of the Cold War and entering into a phase that, seen from that perspective, seemed really, as Fukuyama put it, the end of history. We know now it was, it was not the end of history, but it was an extremely rewarding time. It shaped my perception about the world, of course, but it also keeps me with a very concrete idea that those institutions are filled with extremely well-intentioned and uh, uh, good professionals, and those institutions can play a major role in shaping a better world for all of us. Thank you very much.